Top news for the day, January 4, 2021. Government troops secure the borders of Sulu as the province implements a total lockdown against the new COVID-19 strain. Defense Chief Delfin Lorenzana hits the CPP NPA's deployment of assassins in urban areas. The army blames the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters for the ambush of a Maguindanao mayor's convoy. And the PBA is set to hold its annual draft and awards night online. Good day, I am Rom Dulfo. Welcome to PNA Newsroom. Our top story, the provincial government of Sulu has placed the province on lockdown for 14 days starting Monday, January 4. This is in anticipation of the possible entry of a new variant of the COVID-19 virus, which was recently detected in nearby Sabah. Sulu Governor Abdul Sakur Tan announced the restrictions and penalties that will be imposed for the next 14 days. Among them are prohibition for, to travel and entry to the province beyond 14 days if needed. Tan notes the province did not have the necessary facilities and equipment to detect and treat COVID-19 and its new variant. The Western Mindanao Command has meanwhile deployed troops to guard the borders of Sulu and keep the new COVID-19 strain offshore. West Mincom Commander Carletto Villuan Jr. said they already deployed additional troops to secure the border and to disallow entry of passengers' vessels from Sabah. He said the naval forces Western Mindanao will conduct patrol in the maritime borders of Sulu, Tawi-Tawi, and the Zamboanga Peninsula to prevent the entry of infected individuals. The city government of Taguig has reported a decrease in the number of active cases of COVID-19 after New Year. The City Epidemiology and Disease Surveillance Unit says from about 43 cases, the number dropped to 17 in the past three days. The recovery rate increased to 98% with an additional 30 cases reported. Meanwhile, the city government reminded business establishments to submit an infectious disease preparedness and response plan as part of other requirements for the renewal of business permits until January 20. Meanwhile, the local government of Makati City has set aside about 1 billion pesos to buy COVID-19 vaccines, which would be distributed to residents for free. Makati Mayor Abi Binay said they have coordinated with the vaccine czar Carlito Galvez Jr. and the COVID-19 Interagency Task Force regarding the city's plans to hold mass vaccination. The city plans to provide two free vaccine doses per resident this 2021. The LGU is also preparing online registration to make it easier for residents to get free vaccines. In other news, Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana slammed the Communist Party of the Philippines New People's Army as it plans to deploy partisan units to counter government security forces in urban areas. Lorenzana answered CPP founding chair Jose Maria Orjoma Season's claim that they have bases to conduct operations against police and military and allied units who are allegedly char targeting unarmed activists and civilians. Lorenzana said the announced deployment of so-called assassins has justified the terrorist tag issued by the Anti-Terrorism Council against the CPP-NPA. Lorenzana labeled the partisan units as terrorist NPA assassins who are notorious for targeting government officials and unarmed non-competent civilians in the past. He adds, special partisan operation is murder by assassination or euphemism for extrajudicial killing. He said, like NPA special partisan units or SPARUs in the past, these assassins will fail their mission. A lawmaker has called on PhilHealth to delay the implementation of the premium high contribution schedule this year. Anakalusugan Parliament's representative Mike Defensor said even if the universal health care law mandated the 3.5% increase in contributions, the state health insurer must consider that most of its contributors are daily wage earners. He said these contributors were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Defensor appealed to Phil Health to delay its contribution hike by up to six months and give Congress time to amend the universal health care law. He notes... PhilHealth is unlikely to run out of funds since it still has a 71 billion peso budgetary subsidy from national funds. He urged PhilHealth to go after private hospitals 
that received up to 15 billion pesos in advance payment for COVID-19 treatments as well as 1.5 billion pesos from fraud cases against health facilities. Still to come, the Army blames the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters or BIFF for the ambush of a Maguindanao mayor's convoy. A diarrhea outbreak leaves one dead and about 33 others hospitalized in Davao Occidental. More on this when the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpuin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ng mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan ito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching PNA Newsroom. Thank you for joining us. Military authorities have blamed the Daesh-inspired Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, or BIFF, in the ambush of a town mayor Sunday and the recurring harassment against indigenous peoples' communities in South Upi, Maguindanao. Lieutenant Colonel Anhovic Atilano, speaking for the Army's 6th Infantry Division, said the BIFF was behind the ambush of town mayor Reynald Bert Insular, who emerged on scale. A hitchhiker was killed while three others were injured in the 2 p.m. ambush in Barangay, Pandan, South Ubi. The BIFF was also blamed for the harassment of civilian communities in Barangay, Itaw, South Ubi. Atelano said the BIFF wanted to grab the ancestral lands of the Tedorai people in Barangay, Itaw. Mayor Insular said he went to Barangay Itao Sunday morning to extend relief aid to some 600 families affected by the BIFF harassment. He requested the deployment of peacekeeping troops in Barangay Itao to prevent similar harassment in the future. A senior citizen died while 33 others were hospitalized due to a diarrhea outbreak that hit Barangay Butuan in Jose Abad Santos Town in Davao Occidental. Mayor Jason John Joyce identified the victim as Emilio Sumanday, 68, and a resident of the barangay. Citing the municipal health office findings, Joyce said the infectious diarrheal disease was due to contaminated water from a deep well, the main source of water in the said barangay. Joyce assured that the affected residents have been taken care of and hospitalization costs will be shouldered by the local government. He also called for an emergency meeting with the Municipal Interagency Task Force to plan out further actions to be undertaken. Police are investigating five persons suspected of involvement in the death stray bullet incident that killed a 12-year-old child last new year in Lano del Norte. More on this and other news from the provinces from Marito Muahe. Police has identified five individuals as persons of interest on the death of a 12-year-old girl who was hit with a stray bullet during the New Year revelry in Barangay Poblacion, Sapad Town, Lanao del Norte. 
Lieutenant Elric Palanas, Chief of Safad Police, said the five people were subjected to paraffin and ballistic tests to identify who among them fired a gun on midnight of January 1. Victim Suzette Manamparan suddenly fell to the ground with a bullet wound while playing with her cousins in front of their house to celebrate the new year. Her mother, Emmeline, appealed for the suspect to have a conscience and surrender to the police so that her daughter's death will be given justice. Meanwhile, the city government of Cotabato said the city has registered zero firecracker-related injuries for the ninth straight year. Twelve persons, however, were arrested for possession of firecrackers in the city during the New Year's Eve revelry. Since 2013, the entry, sale, and possession of all forms of firecrackers and pyrotechnics have been prohibited here. Eastern Visayas also welcomed a peaceful and safe New Year with no reported firecracker-related injuries as of Saturday. Last year, the region recorded a total of 15 firecracker-related injuries due to the use of boga, quitis, five-star whistle bomb, recycled firecracker powder, bingala, and piccolo. Meanwhile, the police reported two indiscriminate firing cases involving a village official and a civilian in Maidolong, Eastern Samar and Kalbayog City in Samar on December 21 and 23, respectively. Meanwhile, the recorded injuries in Soxargen due to the holiday revelry have increased to 14, but no cases of fireworks or firecracker ingestion and deaths were monitored in the area. The reported injuries so far decreased by 55% compared with the 31 cases monitored in the same period last year. Six of the cases were recorded in South Cotabato, four in Sultan Kudarat, two in this city, and one each in Sarangani and North Cotabato. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Moahe. In business, oil companies and distributors welcome the new year with a big increase in the prices of liquefied petroleum gas products. Petron, Phoenix Petroleum and Solane announced increases in LPG and auto LPG prices. These increments translate to an increase of 41 to at least 45 pesos and 76 cents in prices of an 11 kilogram LPG tank. The price adjustment reflects the movement of the contract prices of LPG for January. Up next. The League of Cities of the Philippines, or LCP, expresses support for the national government's COVID-19 vaccination program. And the PBA is set to hold its annual draft and awards night online. The PNA News returns after these reminders. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, Takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. Ugaliin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito.
The League of Cities of the Philippines has committed to support the COVID-19 vaccination program of the national government in a bid to ensure vaccine supply for its member cities. In Bacolod City Mayor Evelio Leonardia, a national president of the LCP, said that the procurement and allocation of vaccines is a matter of teamwork between the national government and the LGUs. Leonardia said vaccines are Secretary Carlito Galvez could discuss the concerns of LGUs with the Government Procurement Policy Board. Leonardia last month formed the LCP Committee on Vaccine Availment for the city mayors to ensure their own constituents have early access to vaccines. Galvez said President Duterte is glad that there are city mayors volunteering to buy their own COVID-19 vaccines and cities that have no budget will be given more allocation by the national government. The Health Department reminds accommodation establishments serving as isolation facilities for returning overseas Filipinos or ROFs in Metro Manila to strictly implement the 14-day mandatory quarantine protocol. This even if they test negative in RT-PCR testing, especially if they have come from countries with the new variant of COVID-19, such as the UK and the US. DOT NCR Regional Director Woodrow McKeeling Jr. said ROFs are required to undergo a swab test and a 14-day quarantine as ordered by the Interagency Task Force. McKeeling also urged hotels to ensure that check-in procedures for ROFs would be fast and comfortable to lower the risk of exposure to COVID-19. At least 850 Aitas and poor families in Lasang, Cagayan received food and gift packs from Cagayan Valley Police. Region 2 Police Director Brigadier General Crisaldo Nieves led the distribution of hundreds of food packs, gift packs, and assorted clothing through the Lingkod Bayanihan sa Barangay project on Saturday. Filipinos abroad and from other regions sponsored the outreach activity. Nieves promised to extend more help to less fortunate families, especially in this time of the pandemic. Meanwhile, Nieves conferred the Medalla ng Kagalingan to Lasang Police Chief Pablo Tumbali and Master Sergeant Ever Tepang for notable operational accomplishments. He also turned over five Galil rifles to Lasang Police. The Philippine Basketball Association will be holding its major preseason activities online due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The league will be doing its awards night and the rookie draft through video conferencing on January 17. Unlike the usual Leo Awards, only the best player of the conference and not the most valuable player of the season will be handed out. Also to be presented are the outstanding rookie and the special team instead of the rookie of the year at the mythical selection, respectively. The most improved player, all defensive team, and the Samboy Lim Sportsmanship Award will be handed out during the special awards night. Meanwhile, the March 14 draft will take place at the virtual realm instead of holding it physically at the Robinson's Place Manila Atrium, regardless of quarantine status. Take one more look at today's biggest stories. Government troops secure the borders of Sulu as the province implements a total lockdown against the new COVID-19 strain. Defense Chief Delfin Lorenzana hits the CPP-NPA's deployment of assassins in urban areas. The army blames the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters for the ambush of a Maguindanao mayor's convoy. And the PBA is set to hold its annual draft and awards night online. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA News Group. To check more news content, check our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCAO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. We tell stories that inspire change. I am Rom Dufo. Have a good day.